Good afternoon. It's December 11th, 2022. Welcome to the show. I'm Hannah Parker, broadcasting on the 5 gigahertz frequency from unceded Ohlone territory, deep in the heart of the underground. Lots to cover today in the ongoing intimidation campaign by right-wing extremist groups against drag events across the country. And a big L for TERFs in Oakland last week. Local gender reactionary Lear Keith got pied in the face again. Stick around for that. But first, shout out to Raw Thing on this intro. This is beautiful morning. Breaking news this morning out of Bloomington, Indiana, where a Proud Boys-affiliated paramilitary group was planning to protest a drag brunch at a local brewery. Let me just get this picture out of the way. There we go. Early reports on social media indicate the group was outnumbered at least two to one by members of the community who came out in support of the event. The brewery and nearby local businesses were giving out free food and coffee to defenders of the drag show. And check out this king. Santifa out here serving coal. Check that out. Getting the tips, too. Fucking love to see it. Oh, it's just so good. Yeah, nice to see some good news. The key takeaway from this is that organizing works, showing up works, putting up this kind of resistance is the quickest way to shut these groups down. But we have to put the work in. Stay up on drag events in your area coming up. Follow the organizers and venues on social social media and come out to support those events. We need everyone standing up for our drag royalty right now. They do so much for the queer community and we need to give them all the love and support and protection we can right now. This is just one instance in a wave of organized intimidation by right-wing paramilitary groups against drag events across the country. As a November 22nd report from the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation illustrates, quote, GLAD found 124 incidents in 2022 of anti-LGBTQ protests and threats targeting specific drag events. 
The majority of the incidents occurred during Pride festivities in June and, and into September, October, and November, including false rhetoric against performers deployed in campaign ads for the midterm elections. The analysis shows increasingly violent rhetoric and incidents as the year progressed, including the firebombing of a Tulsa donut shop that had hosted a drag event in October. Within the past two weeks of the report, legislation targeting public drag performance was introduced in Tennessee and Texas, leading to a total of eight propo proposed anti-drag bills this year. So I want to shift to talking about North Carolina. Um, the FBI is investigating a terrorist attack on two power substations in Moore County, North Carolina, on December 3rd. You've probably heard about this in the news. The success of this attack has highlighted more than 70 attacks on key infrastructure this year. The attack left 45,000 people without electricity or communication in freezing weather. Critical equipment at the substation was targeted with a firearm suggesting technical knowledge by the saboteurs. The outage called the outage caused a four-car pileup, and First Health Moore Regional Hospital in Pinehurst was forced to switch to backup generators. Reports on social media indicated that the terrorists may have been motivated in cutting power to a, a theater hosting a local drag show, although official motives for the attack have not been established by the authorities. The event continued despite the loss of power. As writer and LGBTQ advocate Charlotte Clymer writes on Substack, Last night, two substations in Moore County, North Carolina, were fired upon with weapons simultaneously, allegedly to cut power to a local theater hosting a drag show. I say allegedly because it hasn't yet been confirmed by authorities, but it sure would take a hell of a string of coincidences to arrive at any other conclusion. I highly recommend you read or listen to Charlotte's post. I'll link it in, uh, I'll link it in the description. Uh, she digs into some shady social media posts made around the time of the attack and also highlights a local conservative Facebook group that has been antagonizing the organizers of the drag show called More County Citizens for Freedom. In Columbus, Ohio, uh, Saturday, December 3rd, 2022, the Associated Press reports, quote, an Ohio school says an internal dispute over security prompted a last-minute cancellation of a weekend children's storytelling event featuring performers in drag amid a planned protest by a far-right group. The Red Oak Community School organized the event, which was to be held at, at the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus, where the school is based. According to a statement released on the school's website, Red Oak Community School has, quote, We have been solely operating on tuition from loving parents, fundraising from our community, and the passion of our educators. We offer a learner-centered approach to education dedicated to cultivating joy in learning, fostering of self-confidence and agency, and preparing students to be environmental stewards and champions of social justice. This is the core of who we are." End quote. To be clear, this is a private school located in a church. So whenever you hear the right wing talking about public schools or their tax dollars or religious freedom, it's bullshit, okay? I, I think this is an important point to hone in on, and not necessarily from the hypo hypocrisy angle, because I don't think that's effective. However, the right to private schooling, fiscal responsibility, and religious freedom are broadly popular in the United States, especially within the center-right and right-libertarian blocks of U.S. politics. And while I may not agree with those political persuasions on most things, I think it's worthwhile to make the argument to them that the groups like the Proud Boys and Patriot Front really are just hate groups. All that stuff about the First Amendment and protecting children is a lie, and clearly they're willing to throw religious freedom under the bus because that's exactly what's happening here. It's a farce. We see this in fascist movements going all the way back almost 100 years, right? So going back to the original quote, the AP says that the event was canceled over an internal dispute about security, which... <laughs> I read that, and I already knew what the dispute was about. <laughs> um, should we reach out to the cops, or should we rely on our own community to protect us as exclusively? And that's a topic for another show, but it's definitely an important discussion that I want to cover soon. Going back to the... Um, sorry, I already read that part. 
owed to Lakeland, Florida. ABC affiliate WFTS Tampa Bay reports, quote, Mama Ashley Rose was hosting a fundraising event with other drag queens at the Art slash iFact venue in Lakeland on Saturday when a dozen people displaying Nazi symbols showed up to protest. People were walking from the parking lot into the building. They were being screamed at, called pedophiles. These people are screaming Heil Hitler, absolutely disgusting things, end quote. Like, I'm not being hyperbolic here, and I want to make that clear. This is straight up mask off Nazi shit. And it's important we fight back as hard as we can. Um, the article goes on to say, quote, Lakeland police said neo-Nazis were not Lakeland residents. The rabbi of Temple Emanuel Synagogue of Lakeland, David Goldstein, believes not enough local leaders have spoken out against extremist incidents. If you speak to anyone who is Jewish, black, Muslim, Chinese, you're going to hear that it never went away and it's increasing, said Goldstein. In a recent report by ADL, formerly known as Anti-Defamation League, extremist-related incidents rose by 71% in Florida from 2020 to 2021. Excuse me. Dramatic rise not only nationally, but especially in the state of Florida when it comes to extremist activity and anti-Semitic activity, said Sarah Emans, EDL Florida Regional Director. ADL points to the normalization of hateful rhetoric as part of the cause. Quote, we see hateful rhetoric coming from our elected leaders, leadership, media personalities through Twitter and all of these things make individuals who have biased beliefs start to act upon these beliefs, Eman said. Eman said it's critical that all communities work collectively to denounce these hate groups. See, these groups always almost come from out of town, outside agitators, coming into communities and bullying people they don't agree with, terrorizing them, attacking infrastructure, bomb threats, death threats. Last weekend also saw right-wing actions against drag events in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, three events in New York, Manhattan, in Staten Island, and Long Island, and community members in Aurora, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, successfully defended a show there, according to Vice. We'll be watching this story closely and covering all of these events, all of the events we can as they happen. Excuse me. In Bay Area local news, we've been covering a story that captures the attention of the nation over the last couple weeks. The San Francisco Police Department has been attempting to gain authorization from the city to be able to use remotely operated robots to deploy lethal force against city residents. Public outcry over the language in a new law enforcement equipment policy proposal prompted the San Francisco Board of Supervisors to reverse an earlier endorsement of the policy last Tuesday. My admittedly amateur understanding of the process is that the section of the policy covering robotic use of force needs to go back to committee for discussion and public comment. Looking at the rules committee agenda for Monday, it doesn't appear to be scheduled. However, the agenda for the full board meeting does have an item for the final passage of the policy proposal, so it's unclear to me when the next opportunity for public comment will be. Um, if you live in San Francisco, email your supervisor anyway and tell them that any robotic use of force is unacceptable. You can watch the board meetings live on the city's website and find the number for public comment there as well. And I'll have some links for that in the description also. Subscribe to our channel for the latest updates on this. We'll be covering this story like green on grass until every last detail is resolved. So stay tuned. And remember, only you can prevent the robot apocalypse. And on to our last story tonight. Turf Watch in Oakland. Um, notorious anti-transgender activists Lear Keith and Kara Dansky attempted to hold an action at the trial of Dana Rivers last week and just got absolutely clowned on. Um, so if you're not familiar, Dana Rivers is a transgender woman who's recently convicted of murdering a lesbian couple and their son. It's an absolutely tragic story. Um, don't murder people. It's not a thing anyone should do for any reason. Um, that being said, Keith and Dansky front a group known as Women's Liberation Front, or WOLF. Um, 
which has ties to Deep Green Resistance, an eco-fascist group that spun out of the anarchist environmentalist activist movements of the 90s and early 2000s. About a dozen members of Wolf were spotted outside the Alameda County Courthouse in Oakland last Monday afternoon with transphobic banners stating no men in women's prisons and misgendering Dana Rivers. While we must, while, and while we, we must condemn the murder of queer people of color in the strongest terms, regardless of who the perpetrators are, the actions of turf groups like Wolf have taken a uh, the actions that turf groups like Wolf take have the potential for great harm against all queer people, not just trans women, by feeding into the right wing narratives and attempting to le legitimize anti transgender hate across the political spectrum. Nobody came to hear them speak. Instead, some heroes on bikes rode up, popped open an umbrella as a distraction, uh, pied them in the face, um, threw an egg at them, I think and then stole their banners and eventually later set the banners on fire. Um, no one was injured, no, no arrested, uh, no arrests, and absolutely marvelous, marvelous work by the counter-protesters, flawless victory. Um, yeah, you can see more about that online, um, but if you ser just search for it, um, I don't know. So, yeah, I guess, oh, here's the, um, yes. That's the last picture we have. So, um, but that's all I have for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, it's still in early development, um, and, and I want to focus on quality content, but we'll definitely be working on things like lighting and editing and audio and all of that technical stuff, so bear with me. Um, but And I really want to incorporate a lot more music going forward as well, so... Uh, like, subscribe, all the buttons, and stay connected to Cute Kitten Media for the latest in the fight against fascism.